one student wants to know, uh, you knew General MacArthur very early when your father, Charles Clark, would have MacArthur over to your home. Yes. Could you talk about young Douglas MacArthur for us? Yes. Your Douglas, my father was stationed, my father graduated from West Point in 1890. Yes. He made the Army his life career. Uh, he finally went to the command and general staff school at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Yes. Which now is in existence and is the, is the elite school that all officers uh, uh, crave to go to be selected for because it determines whether you're fit for high command or not. Yes. So my dad was a student at the command and general staff school when MacArthur was a, a young officer, a lieutenant in the engineers stationed at Fort Lemworth. Yes. And uh, I had an older daughter, I mean my sister, and uh, and we, my family had known MacArthur before, and so he'd come over to our house a good deal, and the mother liked to go to the dances, my sister too, so we saw a good deal of him. Yes. So every time I'd see General MacArthur, uh, in between times, he'd always say, give my love to your mother and father. Yes, yes. Uh, what, what, what type of person was he, General he Clark? Very attractive, very attractive. And uh, uh, of course, I as a young kid, I was just in high school, he was, uh, I thought he was, I thought he was great. Yes. He turned out that way. Yes, he did. So, uh, and then when he had the Korean War at the beginning, and it was so tough because he didn't have the means, and the, uh, the Chinese came in. I was then in Washington after the war. I had the uh, training of the whole army, and I was training the replacements that we kept sending to him. Yes. So I was sent over to see MacArthur and to talk about how we could do a better job and his ideas as to any specific kind of training we should send to give the men that he was going to get. Yes. So I saw him during the war and then I took over his job uh, shortly after he was relieved. Uh, General Clark, was uh, General MacArthur very embittered when Truman relieved him? Did you speak to him after that? See, I did not see. MacArthur went right home. Yes. And uh, I did not see him uh, after after he was relieved. I did see him. Uh, I did see him back in New York and had a chance to talk with him. Yes. Uh, the Herbie Hoover and, I, and MacArthur and I were at dinner with friends. Uh, and so we had a chance to really let our hair down and talk about uh, the... Event. Yes. And, and what did General MacArthur say to you, General Clark, about that uh, being relieved? Well, he, 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 uh, he knew that I knew that his hands were tied behind his back. Yes. Because uh, they placed the same restrictions on me when I took over. Yes. But at any rate, MacArthur was relieved. I didn't think he should be that way. I thought he had had too great a record of accomplishment for his country. Yes. That's the way the ball bounces. I'd been told by the president, he had made it to me, that, uh, that I'd, uh, I, I, he knew I, I, I wanted to go into education, I wanted to retire. Yes. And he knew, he knew that. He sent for me and said, I understand you, you're thinking of retiring. And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, uh, do you obey your commander in chief? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I want you, uh, I want you to remain in service for a while. Yes, yes. So I was, I was standing by, and when uh, I was on the West Coast inspecting out there at Monterey, when I get a phone call at 5 in the morning, 8 o'clock Washington time, Yes. to get back to Washington fast. So I, I flew back and was told that, Get going. Yes, sir.